morning, Grow Church family and friends. We're so glad that you're online with us. We're on Facebook and YouTube right now. Uh, Sunday's at 1045, and we will be every Sunday at 1045. So thank you again for connecting uh, with us and with God. Uh, this is what we do every Sunday. We have a call to worship, which is an invitation to worship Jesus. Then we have a prayer of confession where we realize that our lives are not going the way that God designed them to be. And the words of assurance, remembering that God promises to, if we turn to him, if we trust him, that he will fix us and fix the whole world one day. And we look forward to that promise and we want it to start in our lives today. And it can. Then we have a children's message where the kids gather around, learn more about God, a song of worship where there's words on the screen. So we hope that you sing aloud if you're a singer. If you're not, just meditate on who God is and what God has done. Then we have our scripture and a sermon. I'll share uh, some reflection on God's word that I hope will speak to you today. And thank you so much for participating in our online worship. Maybe there's someone on your feed who would be blessed by this message. So uh, we'd appreciate it if you uh, share that message with others on your timeline. If you want to join us in person, we're also meeting in the courtyard every Sunday at 1045, the same time we're streaming in our courtyard. Just RSVP are the church by calling, don't text, call or email, and we'd love to see you in person. But either way, whether you're in person in the courtyard or you're online at home uh, throughout the week, we're so glad that you're worshiping God with us. So our call to worship this morning, it's from Psalm 86. There is none like you, O Lord, nor are there any works like yours. All nations you have made shall come and bow down before you, O Lord, and shall glorify your name. For you are great and do wondrous things. You alone are God. Amen. So we come to that only God, the one who's only God, the one who does wondrous things. And we realize that we want God to do wondrous things in our lives, but we have barriers by our behaviors, by our mindset. So we, this is our prayer of confession from Isaiah 30. And repentance and rest is your salvation, and quietness and trust is your strength. But you would have none of it. Yet the Lord longs to be gracious to you. He rises to show you compassion. Let us spend a few moments in silence, letting God see us and being vulnerable with God and asking him to fix what is broken. Let us pray in this silent moment of confession. Amen. Amen. Isn't God good? So as we reflect on God working in our lives, we reflect on the peace that God promises to bring us. As God has given us peace through Christ, so let us pass the peace of Christ to each other. The peace of Christ be with you all at home and also with you. Let us share online in the comments some greetings of Christ's peace. Peace of Christ be with you and also with you. We're so glad you're here worshiping God with us. We're so glad that God promises to do wondrous things. We're so glad that God has given us peace and has forgiven our sins. Peace be with you also. So why don't you gather around the kids and we'll have a special message for them in a few moments. Hey kids, it's Pastor Steve. I'm so glad you're with me. I'm so glad we're together learning about God. Even you're at home, right? God is big. He is with us. Uh, what I'm going to talk to the grown-ups a little bit is about Hannah. She was praying to God, but she was praying anyway. She was moving her lips and the people could not hear her words, right? And I had, it reminded me of this. You know what this is? Not a telescope, a stethoscope. Yes, a stethoscope. So a stethoscope, you probably heard. Have you ever had your doctor do this? They put this in their ears and they go like this. Right, they listen to your lungs and your heart. I have a question. Can you hear your lungs right now? What about now? Can you hear the heart of the person sitting next to you? Probably not, unless you scared them super big. 
right? You cannot hear their heart, you cannot hear their lungs, but this helps us, helps doctors. Okay, just checking. Helps doctors hear hearts. And you know, God doesn't need a stethoscope. God hears our prayers. He knows what's in our hearts. Hannah said she was praying in her heart. And I want you to know that God hears your prayers. He hears them no matter how quiet they are, no matter what else is going on, no matter if you're not even using your words or even moving your lips. God hears your prayers. He hears what you're telling him. So even right now, you can just say a prayer in your mind and God hears you. He not only hears you, he loves you and he wants to work in your life. So when God, you pray, when you pray tonight before bed, when you pray before you eat, or when you pray whenever, when you're scared or angry, God hears your prayers. I might not be able to hear your prayers, but God does. So I'm gonna pray right now, and you're gonna hear my prayer, I'm gonna hear my prayer, but more importantly, who's gonna hear a prayer? Yes, God will hear a prayer. Let us pray. God, we thank you that you always hear prayers of your children. No matter how young they are, Lord, no matter if we use big words or small words, no matter if we don't know what to say, you hear our prayers like you heard Hannah's prayer. So God, we pray that these kids may know that you listen to them, that you give them boldness to pray for you, Lord, when they're sad, when they're angry, when they don't know what to say, Lord, they could come to you and know that you hear them. Thank you, God. Bless them. Bless their families. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Right, guys, let us sing and worship God together. And remember, whenever you pray, God hears. Amen. Let's make this our prayer this morning, church. Let's allow God into every area of our lives for his good. Shiloh, Hannah stood up. Now Eli, the priest, 
was sitting on his chair by the doorpost of the Lord's house. And in her deep anguish, Hannah prayed to the Lord, weeping bitterly. And she made a vow, saying, Lord Almighty, if you will only look on your servant's misery and remember me and not forget your servant, but give her a son, then I will give him to the Lord for all the days of his life, and no razor will ever be used on his head. Early the next morning they arose and worshipped before the Lord and went back to their home at Ramah. Elkanah made love to his wife Hannah, and the Lord remembered her. And so the time of Hannah became, so in the course of time, Hannah became pregnant and gave birth to a son. She named him Samuel, saying, because I asked the Lord for him. Then Hannah prayed and said, my heart rejoices in the Lord. In the Lord my horn is lifted high. My mouth boasts over my enemies, for I delight in your deliverance. There is no one holy like the Lord. There is no one beside you. There is no rock like our God. Do not keep talking so proudly, or let your mouth speak such arrogance. For the Lord is a God who knows, and by him deeds are weighed. The bows of the warrior are broken, but those who stumble are armed with strength. Those who were full hire themselves out for food, but those who were hungry are hungry no more. She who is barren has borne seven children, but she who has had many sons pines away. The Lord brings death and makes alive. He brings down to the grave and raises up. The Lord sends poverty and wealth. He humbles and he exalts. He raises the poor from the dust and he lifts the needy from the ash heap. He seats them with princes and has them inherit a throne of honor. For the foundations of the earth are the Lord's. On them he has set the world. He will guard his feet, the feet of his faithful servants, but the wicked will be silenced in the place of darkness. It is not by strength that one prevails. Those who oppose the Lord will be broken. The Most High will thunder from heaven. The Lord will judge the ends of the earth. He will give strength to his king and exalt the horn of his anointed. Thank you, Dorothy. Let us pray. Oh God, we come before you in this place, guided by your light, guided by your spirit, gathered to hear your word, hungry to obey you. Help us, Lord, to live according to your purposes. Help us to hear what you have for us this morning and align our lives with your way, with your truth, and with your life. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Prayer. Some of us do it before meals, during bedtime, maybe when we wake up and uh, to prolong the time uh, that we have to get out of bed. But the book of 1 Samuel starts with two prayers. Hannah praying both times in chapter 1 and chapter 2. The first prayer, prayer of petition, asking God for something. The second prayer, prayer of praise, thanking God and, and giving characteristics of God's goodness. As I was preparing this message and I said, Wow, another story of women's struggle with infertility. It seems like the Old Testament has quite a few of those. 
of, uh, which hits us in different ways depending on our experience of uh, fertility or infertility and relationships and unde you know, fulfilled desires. But it is a regular theme of uh, the Old Testament scriptures specifically of people praying to have children. As we've said before, that children were not only uh, a joy to have around, sometimes, most of the time, uh, but they were um, a sign of God's favor and blessing and continuing the legacy that God has. So uh, we, uh, children gave a whim, uh, women a stature in this Old Testament culture. So there was a lot of things tied up. And Hannah is one of those women who has a loving husband, but her heart is broken over the lack of ability to conceive. And being a godly woman, she takes these deep concerns and desires and brings them to the Lord in prayer. And as you heard, the prayer is not a polite prayer. It's not a prayer that uh, would be something that everyone would nod and say, oh, how nice or how godly. Um, it's not a token prayer that is said so you can hurry up and eat your food or those prayers that I do at a community event where uh, I often feel like I'm the garnish so they can go on with the agenda of whatever civil, uh, civil recognition is happening there. It's a hot mess of a prayer. You see, in verse 10 of chapter 1, the, the scripture says that in her deep anguish, Hannah prayed to the Lord, weeping bitterly. Hannah is broken. Her mascara is running down her face. Her lips are moving, but her words are unintelligible. She is praying out of anguish, praying like nobody is watching. But somebody is watching. The priest Eli is watching, and he assumes she must be drunk. So that's, that helps us to image what type of praying Hannah was doing. That it was so passionate that people thought that she you know, came from the festivities and she was still uh, working that out of her system. That helps us figure out what a hot mess of a prayer this looked like. Eli, the priest, couldn't hear Hannah's prayer, but God did. God knows and knew Hannah's situation. He knew her family. He knew her barrenness. He knew her struggles. God saw beyond her circumstances. And even though uh, she was not pregnant at the time and couldn't conceive, God in his uh, position outside of ta time saw her son Samuel, saw Samuel anointing King David, which happens in the future, King David being the ancestor of Jesus. And all this is stuff that God knew and God worked in his perfect time. And us, looking at it thousands of years later, we can see you know, that Hannah's prayer and what would come of that and how that would be woven in our scriptures and our story. God knew the role that our son was about to have. But before Israel had a king, before Samuel anointed anyone, there was a passionate praying woman named Hannah. I believe some of the best stories start in prayer. Start with praying for God to move, praying for God to bring comfort, praying for God to provide. To me, sometimes it seems like there's this uh, mystery zone between God's uh, activity and his creation's desire, right? There's this interplay between what we pray and what happens and what God does. You see, God has a perfect will. It's not like God is there looking for some, you know, not sure what to do and, and we're giving him ideas. He has a plan. Like I said, he already knew about Samuel. He already knew about King David. He already knew about Jesus. But God involves us. God involves fallible, short-sighted humans in his process of creating the future. God plans to provide, but he still wants us to ask. It's this dynamic where ordinary people like you and I, people who are socially powerless like Hannah, how that we can be part of God's plan, that we can be involved in what God is doing. God asks us to pray. Right? Even the Lord's Prayer, God is saying to pray for your daily bread. God wants us to be part of this process. And it's an honor and a privilege that we can bring a request before a mighty God. 
It's not that the one who created the heavens and the earth couldn't accomplish things without our help. Right? There's some misunderstanding sometimes of saying that, you know, that we, God needs us to do things. God involves us. God wants us to participate. But if God's going to do something, we're not going to, you know, trip God up. But God desires our collaboration. Even though we're, you know, imperfect people. Even though we have struggles. It is part of his plan. Your prayer is part of God's plan to bring about change and transformation to yourself and to the community and to the world. He desires those who created in his image to participate and to be proactive. Isn't that love? A God who does not need us, but wants us. Right? Isn't that, there's people that we, we sometimes ask people to do stuff just so we can spend time with them. Right? Are there people that, you know, things would be easier? Little people, big people, people with limited abilities. And we involve those folks. Yeah. I know uh, there are people where we have, I've heard we have special need people that we involve in projects. Not because we couldn't do it without their help, but because we want to spend time with them. Because we want them to be part of the project. We want them to feel like they're accomplishing something. We want that relationship. It's not that God is not able and all has a boundless resources to do things without, you know, your prayers. God in love and care says, I'm doing a new thing. I'm doing work. I'm, I'm bringing about my son, Jesus Christ. And your son could be part of that process, that chain. That's a love that God who does not need us wants us to be part of it. And prayer is one of the ways we participate with God's activity. Hannah participated with God was doing by passionate prayer. The Bible says in her deep anguish, Hannah prayed to the Lord, weeping bitterly. You see, there's times and places for polite prayer. There's times for polite prayers. You know, Thanksgiving may not be the best time to, you know, to have your weeping bitterly prayer. Maybe it is. I don't know. I haven't sat around your table. Uh, but, but there's time for polite prayer. And there's time for passionate, clean prayer. Things that are, when we just go before the Lord with our brokenness before God. Most of us, I would think, have prayed with tears in our eyes. Have you sought the Lord with your feelings, with your emotions? As I joked around earlier during our time of worship, um, Reformed Christians get a bad rap for uh, being whole body Christians. Meaning, there's a nickname, the Frozen Chosen is what... Uh, the nickname they give us Reformed Christians because we're not known to uh, show our, the cards of, of passion and bodily movement in worship. But uh, we, we don't let our emotions participate in our prayer, our worship, or theology. But as whole humans, we're given feeling and emotion. There's times that, we, that is appropriate to bring our emotions before God. Right? Because if, we, if that's the way we're feeling, if that's the way we're fully there, to hold back, it's not going to fool God. It's not that our feelings and our tears manipulate God. It's that we're being honest with God. We're being truthful with God. Right? That's why we talk about why does God want us to pray? He knows everything anyway. But yeah, He wants us to be truthful. He wants us to be genuine. He wants us to come before Him with our whole person. Hopefully you have brothers and sisters in Christ that you can talk to uh, without putting on a brave face. You know those people that you can just be honest with and not worry about being misunderstood? Those people you, you could share your joys with and not worry about them being jealous? Or you could share your struggles with and, and not worry about them, you know, uh, gossiping about your situation? Those are good friends. Those are friends that we truly miss when they're not around. The ones you can invite over and not worry that your, your sink is full of dirty dishes because you didn't get to it right then. Right? I know everyone, everyone's pristine. Everyone's sink is empty all the time. I know that, right? But we, it's great to have those people that we could just come into our lives and not, you know, spend the five minutes before they come over just, you know, throwing, chucking stuff in the dishwasher. Right? That we could be honest and true about our situation. Because it's tiresome being fake. It's tiresome putting on a brave face and always second-guessing if you're revealing yourself too much. 
And unfortunately, we're not all blessed to have friends like that right now. Some of you do and some of you don't. But we all have the access to God through Jesus Christ who hears our prayers. Who we don't have to put on a fake persona. We don't have to put on our praying voice to sound like Billy Graham to pray. We could pray like who you are. But God knows our deep struggles and our fears. And he's not put off by our tears, by our emotions. When we're angry, when we're frustrated, scared, we don't have to carry that burden alone. Our bodies and our spirits were not meant for the long-term carrying of that load. Right? Studies have shown it lowers our immune system and crushes our spirits. But the only emotions that we have, when we have emotions, we tend to take them somewhere else. Right? Those people who lash out on, on other people or social media. Right? Or those people who are, just take that uh, fear, that hurt, and just wallow in it. But God is the one who can carry those burdens. Right? It's God who can carry our anger and our tears and our frustration and our uncertainty. If you're worrying about the coronavirus and its impact in this country, if you really care about the November election, if you're concerned about where the future of our country is headed, pray. Pray. I'm not saying don't do other things. You know, pray, vote, then pray again. Right? If this is things that really bother us or keep us up at night, if these are things that we want to vent about, then let us pray. Before you post that meme, say that prayer. Your cares, your concerns, your anger, your feelings are calls to prayer. Right? If you have calls to worship and liturgy, those are calls to prayer. So many times I can't sleep at night because of stuff. I said, maybe this, maybe God's wanting me to pray. Yeah. First Samuel 1 and 2 shows us two different prayers from that same godly woman. Just like your conversation with friends and family changed tone, and content, right? You don't have the same conversation with people all the time. And if there are people like that, don't you try to avoid them because you're like, oh, there goes X, Y, Z, telling me the same three things again. Right? So I've become X, Y, Z sometimes, right? After saying, if I told you this, let me know. Stop me now. Right? When, when our prayers to God, you know, shouldn't be the, maybe as in a beginner and a Christian, we have the same two or three things we say over and over again. But as we deepen our faith, we have a, full-bodied conversation of prayer with God. Right? And so it's not always asking for things. Right? And it's not always acting like everything's great, because it probably isn't. Hannah has a prayer of praise in chapter 2. She prays about God and about the action and character of God. She prays with gratitude and with thanksgiving of what God has done. And she prays about things God has done. She mentions a king. Israel hasn't had a king. She's praying and knowing that God is going to be good, God is going to be consistent, God is going to be faithful, and she's just praising God. And it begins, my heart rejoices in the Lord. Because a holistic prayer life is not coming only to God in tears. There's nothing wrong with that, we said, right? But it's not only about coming to God in tears. It's also coming with God with joy. So many times we have requests, and sometimes I try to balance them and say, when God hasn't you know, there, there's things that if they went wrong, I prayed and God rescued me from that. And I don't want to just go to, you know, whew, that's, that's a relief. I want to spend some time thanking God because I know that if that test was positive or if that thing happened, I would be there, I'll be the hot mess prayer crying. So if God, I didn't have to do that, then I should spend that energy, not just saying, whew, God, another. I should spend that energy praising God and thanking God for things and for the blessings and for the goodness. Hannah praises God proclaiming, there is no one holy like the Lord. There is no one beside you. There is no rock like our God. We have always a reason to pray. Always a reason. Our lives, our community, our world, they're all out of alignment with God's kingdom. Our, our neighbors are struggling with sickness, with poverty, wrestling with injustice, struck by sorrow. Those are calls to prayer. And there's prayers of God's character. God is always merciful. He's always good. He's always gracious. There's always things to pray about. He preserves us by our providence, as our communion liturgy reminds us. God's holiness draws us to praise Him in prayer. 
So in tears of joy or tears of sorrow, or somewhere in between, let's pray. Pray because God remembers us, his children, as he remembered Hannah. Pray because even though God is willing and able to work in our lives, he wants us to participate and come to him in prayer. Pray because you were created to be in this regular communion with God, in regular conversation. Pray because you're sad and wordless. Pray because you're joyful and exuberant. Pray. How can you grow in prayer this week? How can you grow in prayer this week? Pray with passion. Sometimes as a Christian, prayer becomes a little bit of a grocery list, right? Either we're listing things off, check, 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 or maybe we're listing, you know, we pray in our family, we have these different rhythms of prayer, pray in the morning, pray before meals, there are three to five meals a day, you know, pray before bedtime. And sometimes it could be just like autopilot, right? Where are places that we could connect and pray with passion? Connect with God from our heart. Pray continuously and spontaneously. Maybe, maybe other things, you know, you pray when you don't, when you're doing wrong, maybe you feel that temptation to sin. Maybe that's a call to prayer. Say, God, help me and rescue me. God, give me strength to overcome that. Maybe when you're wallowing in sadness. Maybe when you need to vent and blow off steam. Take a walk and pray. Come close to God in prayer. Share your burdens with the one who is able to carry them. Grow in prayer and in praise. Right? Praise is not only for Sunday morning. It's not only something we do together corporately. It's not only with songs. Praise God in prayer for who he is for what he's done, for what he has promised to do. You can pray just by sharing gratitude. Thank you, God, for X, Y, Z. Thank you, God, for being holy and loving. Thank you, you know, thank you for sparing me last year when I was really stressed about that. Thank you for being the, you know, 13th year anniversary of you, of me knowing you, or thank you for, we have so much to pray about. Let's be people of prayer, no matter what our circumstances. So I'm going to close our time now by praying. And ask that you join me in your hearts. All right, God hears your prayer. And if you want to give an audible amen sometime, that's, that's good. That means you agree. But if you if you say praying quietly, silently, that's good too. God hears our prayer. So let's close this sermon, this reflection on 1 Samuel 1 and 2 in prayer. God, we thank you, Lord, that you hear our prayer. Lord, you have given us joy. You have given us uh, you sustained our families. You sustained our health, Lord. We are physically able to gather in this place. And not everyone can say that, Lord. And we give you thanks for that. Lord, we pray for this world, for your creation, for those in the path of forest fires, for those who are recovering from hurricanes. Lord, we pray for the world that you created and that you love and that you're redeeming and restoring. Lord, we pray that you bring healing to those who are ill. We pray that you bring hope to those who live in fear. Lord, we pray that you bring companionship to those who are lonely. God, we pray that for the racial strife that is being felt, Lord, in our country and across the world. Lord, we know you came to redeem and restore humanity. We pray for all those that are created in your image. Lord, we don't have the wisdom of how to go forward, but we pray that your will may be done and that you give us boldness. Lord, we pray uh, for our country. We thank you for this country that we live in, Lord. Sometimes these freedoms that we take for granted, like one that we're exercising right now. So we give you thanks, Lord. Lord, we pray for uh, the Supreme Court process, Lord. We pray that you be involved in those details. We pray, Lord, uh, for the churches in our nation, God, who have different challenges and restrictions and health issues. We pray for our consistory here, Lord, that you give us wisdom as we meet, that you help us to make decisions that are good and godly. Lord, we pray for our national leaders, Lord, the upcoming election, God. We pray that you give us wisdom in how to vote as individuals, Lord. We pray that, uh, that, Lord, all of humanity has sinned, everyone has fallen short, and that is no less for our leaders, Lord. So help us to choose and to vote with wisdom and clarity and help those that are in position and that are, will be in position, 
Lord, help them to rule with justice, with mercy and kindness and love, and live out the rules and the guidance of your kingdom. Lord, we pray for our military personnel stationed all around the world. And we pray for those who are lobbyists and advocates for peace and for justice. Lord, we pray for our local schools, our local government, Lord, for those struggling with housing here. Lord, we pray for those in our church family and our community that are looking for employment, that you may guide them to a place where they can find meaningful work that can provide for their needs. Lord, we pray for your church. Grow being one of millions that is gathered to do your will, to do your work. We pray for unity, O oh God. We pray that we may be holy and not be caught up in things that are not our business, but we may do the, the work of our Father. We pray for missionaries and mission agencies that are sent out to different places to share the good news. And we may recognize our role to do it here in Hudson County and beyond. And we pray this in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth and in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. That is the kingdom and the power of the Lord. Thank you so much for uh, joining us for the scripture, for God's word, for worship and song. And of course, we have one more closing song. Uh, but we want to thank you for participating in our worship service, right? Uh, it's encouraging to see your name on the screen. It's encouraging to uh, come together and realize that we're not alone. God is with us and that we're uh, a family together because of what Jesus has done. One way we participate is by uh, the comments there, of course, uh, by sharing this message with others, but also by giving financially. So we want to thank you all who have given online at grovechurchnj.org. Uh, and uh, we want to thank you all for your support and encouragement as we navigate this world. And we want to know that God is for you and God is working in your life. And we want to pray for you. So if you have a way we could pray for you, well, uh, let us know so we could pray for your request and pray for what God is doing in your life. So you could do that on our website as well. Well, receive this blessing, this sending off. May God bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious to you, now and always. Amen. God bless. Amen. Hannah understood that God is a God who was, who is, and is to come. Let's worship the Ancient of Days. We invite you to stand as you are able.
be unto the ancient of days. From every nation, all of creation, down before the ancient of days. Every tongue, every tongue in heaven and earth shall declare your glory. Every knee shall bow in your throne and worship. Shall declare your glory, every knee 